In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of edema. And in the last video, we talked about hydrostatic pressure and an increase in hydrostatic pressure and the diseases that kind of uh, cause some of the increased hydrostatic pressure and the, uh, the effects of that, ultimately edema. So this picture is taken from the basic pathology textbook, 8th edition. And here we have a capillary bed. And a capillary bed is where the artery side of the artery becomes very leaky for, you know, obviously nu nutrients need to get out into the tissues so the cells can, can consume the glucose and consume the other nutrients in our blood. And the byproducts of cellular metabolism or, you know, the cell working day to day the waste products from them can be absorbed into the vein, the venous end, and be shipped off to the heart and ultimately filtered out by the kidneys and, and such. So this is a capillary bed. And on the arterial side, we have high pressure. Just put here, we have high pressure. So what happens because of we have an increased hydrostatic pressure is water will naturally tend to kind of flow out into the tissues. And there's certain, this is not the physiology uh, videos, but there's certain numbers and you can quantify how much pr water is leaving or how much fluid is leaving the pressure or the uh, artery on this side. And then on the venous side, we have a low pressure. Let's see, we have a low pressure. So because we have a low pressure on the venous end and all the fluid linked out here, we have a higher concentration of molecules, albumin, um, white blood cells, red blood cells, different plasma or plasma proteins. We have an increased concentration, if you will, of these proteins because the water left here. So there's certain, there is a certain concentration, uh, you know, if you take um, this amount of, this volume of blood that's in here, there'll be a certain number of particles. There'll be a certain number. Well, because the water leaked out, you take that same con you take that same cube, you take that same volume of blood here. There is going to be a lot more, a lot more particles within that same volume because you lost you lost H two O, you lost water or other uh, uh, fluid here. So what happens is on the venous end, because of you have a high concentration of, of particles compared to here, water is going to um, come back inside to, to equal out the osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is pressure due to the number of particles per volume. Now, if that doesn't make sense, maybe I'll make a video specifically on osmotic pressure, but you could also review it on Wikipedia or on the web somewhere. Um, but because we have a decreased osmotic pressure here, um, water will be sucked back into the, vein, the veins to go back to the heart. So that's how the fluid exchange kind of comes out here into the tissues in the capillary bed and then it comes back into the venous side and goes to the heart. Now, let's say, just for example, there is like 10 ounces of water that comes out, or 10 ounces of fluid, fluid that comes out on the, the arterial side. And not all of that 10 ounces is absorbed back into the veins on the venous end of the capillary. Let's say eight ounces are, only eight ounces. Well, what happened to the extra two ounces? So you have uh, two ounces extra that's still out here in the fluid. And if that two ounces over time kept accumulating, kept accumulating, we would get edema. And in the case of, um, you know, this extra two ounces, where does this two ounces go? Well, the two ounces goes into the lymphatics. That's why we have a lymphatic system, is to collect this extra two ounces. Now, I don't know if these ratios are 100%, but I'm trying to get the concept down of 
if fluid comes out on this end, not all of it is absorbed back in on the venous end, and the extra two ounces, where does it go to prevent edema in a normal, um, um, healthy adult? It goes through the lymphatics, into the thoracic duct, and eventually into the subclavian vein to drain back into the, the cardiovascular system. I'm going to skip here this reduced plasma osmotic pressure until the next video, and I want to talk about the lymphatic obstruction. If we have here, let's just say a, a lymphatic obstruction here, well because this two ounces needs to go back into the lymphatic system, and we have an obstruction in this pipe, this pipe is, gets clogged for some reason, you're going to have this two ounces stay in these tissues and going to cause ultimately edema. And what are some of the causes of this lymphatic obstruction? Well, you can have an inflammatory, you can have lymphadenitis, uh, you can have an inflammation of the lymphatic system, which you know kind of constricts this a little bit, causes problems within this lymphatic duct, and, and causes backflow. The water will be pushed back and caused to accumulate in the tissues, and this will cause uh, edema. You can have a neoplastic. You can have you know a, a tumor. Uh, you know, breast cancer, for example, can can cause problems with the drainage inside the lymphatics, and you can have edema. Uh, your your right arm, for example, can become edematous, can have a lot of swelling inside, and it could be due to some neoplastic process, due to some cancer. Um, you can have post-surgical problems after surgery if they were doing some surgical uh, procedure and they. Uh, your you know somehow your lymph lymph um, nodes and lymphatic system got damaged or got closed off somehow that could cause edema you can have post radiation problems if you're getting chemotherapy and the chemotherapy destroys some of your lymphatic system well then that's going to back up and cause edema so that is the third type of edema due to lymphatic obstruction see you in the next video